Wild Doll, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Wild Doll was a spy, ace fighter pilot, chocolate historian, medical inventor. He was also the author of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Matilda, BFG, and many more brilliant stories. Quentin Blake has illustrated more than 300 books and was Roald Dahl's favourite illustrator. In 1980 he won the prestigious Kate Greenaway Medal. In 1999 became the first ever children's to create and in 2013 he was knighted for services to illustration. Introducing Charlie Bucket, Augustus Gloop, Mr. Willy Wonka, Baruch Salt, Mike TV, Violet, Eurogard, the Oompa Loompas, Chapter 1 becomes Charlie. These two very old people are the father and mother of Mr. Bucket. Their names are Grandpa Joe and Grandma Josephine. And these two very old people are the father and mother of Mrs. Bucket. Their names are Grandpa George and Grandma Georgina. This is Mr. Bucket. This is Mrs. Bucket. Mr. and Mrs. Bucket have a small boy whose name is Charlie Bucket. This is Charlie. How do you do? And how do you do? And how do you do again? He is pleased to meet you. All of his family, the six grown-ups, count them. The little Charlie Bucket live together in a small wooden house on the edge of a great town. The house wasn't nearly large enough for so many people. And life was extremely uncomfortable for them all. There were only two rooms in the place altogether, and there was only one bed. The bed was given to the four old grandparents 
because they were so old and tired. They were so tired, they never get out of it. Grandpa Joe and Grandma Josephine on this side. Grandpa George and Grandma Georgina on this side. Mr and Mrs Bucket and little Charlie Bucket slept in the other room on mattresses on the floor. In the summertime, this wasn't too bad. But in the winter, freezing cold drafts blew across the floor all night long. And it was awful. There wasn't any question of them being able to buy a better house. Or even one more bed. sleeping. They were far too poor for that. Mr Bucket worked in the toothpaste factory where he sat all day long at a bench and screwed the little caps onto the tops of the tubes of toothpaste after the tubes had been filled. But a toothpaste cap screwer is never paid very much money. And poor Mr Bucket, however hard he worked, and however fast he screwed on the caps, was never able to make enough money to buy one half of the things that so large a family needed. There wasn't even enough money to buy proper food for them all. Only meals they could afford were bread and margarine for breakfast, boiled potatoes and cabbage for lunch, and cabbage soups for supper. Sundays were a bit better. They all looked forward to Sunday, because then, although they had exactly the same, everyone was allowed a second helping. The buckets, of course, didn't starve, but every one of them, the two old grandfathers, the two old grandmothers, Charlie's father and Charlie's mother, and especially little Charlie himself, went about from morning till night with a horrible, empty feeling in their tummies, which Charlie felt is worst of all. And although his father and mother often went without their own share of lunch or supper so that they could give it to him, it still wasn't nearly enough for a growing boy. He desperately wanted something more filling and satisfying than cabbage and cabbage soup. The one thing he longed for more than anything else was chocolate. Walking to school in the mornings, Charlie could see great slabs of chocolate piled up high in the shop windows and he would stop and stare and press his nose against the glass. His mouth watering like mad. Many times a day, he would see other children taking bars of creamy chocolate out of their pockets and munching them greedily. And that, of course, was pure torture. Only once a year, on his birthday, Charlie Bucket ever get to taste a bit of chocolate. The whole family saved up all their money for that special occasion. And when the great day arrived, Charlie was always presented with one small chocolate bar to eat all by himself. And each time he received it on those marvellous birthday mornings, he would place it carefully in a small wooden 
box that he owned and treasure it as though it were a bar of solid gold and for the next few days would allow himself only to look at it but never to touch it. Then at last he could stand it no longer. He would peel back a tiny bit of the wrapping paper at one corner to expose a tiny bit of chocolate and then he would take a tiny nibble just enough to allow the lovely sweet taste to spread out slowly over his tongue the next day he would take another tiny nibble and so on and so on and in this way Charlie would make his sixpenny bar birthday chocolate last him for more than a month to be continued